Adam Savage from Tested here on the set of The Expanse, and I am in a particular room on The Expanse production facility, a room that is very hard for a pack rat, high-functioning hoarder like me to not just send everyone out of the room and let me spend an hour crawling through every single box. I am in The Expanse prop lockup. Every hand prop in this show, every object, every wine bottle, badge, or like dongle dingle greebly gets built and stored in here. And I'm about to talk to prop master Jim Murray about some of the new things they've got to show me. Jim, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Adam. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I have season five treating you well? It's a busy season, but I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. It's keeping us busy for sure. Okay, so I'm. You've laid these out. The, the, you've laid out a couple of things with a specific eye towards the expanse cosplayers, and I pay attention to the scene. And clearly, you do too. I so do. Yep. What did you want to show me? Well, the, the one thing that they always like talk about, or I see in their in their posts, is the boots and the boot lights and how they do that. The mag boots. The mag boots. Right. So green for I'm connected to the ground. Red. 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 red yeah. Red. For Ours I'm, is okay. always red. Right. But when we started the show, we had to keep it really simple because we knew that we had so many boots. We had to put this into and we couldn't make it too hard that we'd be wiring people up with little boxes and stuff. Right, right, right. So we came up with a really simple idea. These slap bracelets yeah. with the tech that's inside of them, they're about $11. So we took the tech that was inside them out and basically used that. So your, your, your actual electronics was a found item? It was a found item. So basically it was all there for us. Which is great because we could never build that for eleven dollars. Right. So then we reversed engineered it into an opening in the boot. So every boot has this little flap that mm -hmm. would come up mm -hmm. that then we could put our tech into. So I've got two pair. I've got a pair over here that's all ready to go. So all we do on the day is when we're about to shoot, we, we have a, a, like a bin full of these little little lights, and we've got white tape on them, <laughs> so it kicks back more light, and we just basically put them in. And then Velcro them in place. So it's we can and you can even turn it on and off from outside the boot. Yep. <gasps> so we've kept it as simple as we can because there's so many of these belters that have these that we didn't want to go running around switching batteries out and putting boards on like sides of their pa their waists and stuff. So this is just like as simple as it gets. I'll bet um, I'll bet your average cosplayer like me would overthink that circuit. Exactly because you think about this big box and mm -hmm. all the lights you need. But we just kept it as simple as we possibly could because it was a it was a budget issue. Sure. And it was a time issue on set, and we couldn't burn through too much time putting two, all these lights on for people. And if we ever have any scenes where somebody comes down and the boot turns on, sometimes VisFX will take over for that. Right. Or we've got ones that are wired to boxes that then we can control. So I we can see. control as soon as so it hits. for a specific shot. Exactly. We do that in close-up shots. And we did it with Julie Mao in se like, uh, season one. She's got a boot built for her. And this, I mean, the ethos of the whole art direction of this show is very found object oriented. Isn't Absolutely, it? yes, yes. Part of my job is just to look through stores and find things that we could then build into other things. So you have to have an eye for like, how can we turn this blender into something else? Right. Or you know, this this fizzy water maker into something else. So did you make did you make weird stuff as a kid? I did actually, yes. So you had the experience then of going yeah. to hardware stores as a kid and looking around and seeing like chrome toilet rings and thinking that could be a that, com link, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And it's when you're on a show that you don't get this this freedom to do that, where, where everything's drawn and you just take the drawing to a builder and they build it, it's not as exciting. This is a lot more fun actually. I yeah, And it, it wakes up that like 12 year old part of your brain. It does. It, you look. You definitely shop with different eyes when you go through a store, right? Because right, you right. see things in different ways, or what they could be, or what they could be for you. I mean, I love being on ships and seeing a door surround that turns out to be the tie-down strap of a truck. It's great. That's, right? that's what we do. That's part of the job. All right. What else are we looking so at here? So then, because we had the comms, the comms were another big deal for mm -hmm. us because in season one we had to come up with all these comms, um, and we came up with all these wrist ideas that the comms would be on their wrist, right. was, but we we didn't have the money to engineer anything anything like that. So we pulled it all back mm -hmm. and we basically came up with a la laser cut piece of plexiglass right. that then would have a 3D print printed body on it Ooh. and then we, ta we take the same boot tech. The same exact light. Except we change the light out in it. Okay. We've got our, our, one of our um, builders to change the lights out mm -hmm. and we just, it's the same light and that's exactly the same tech. Wow. So we've used that for a number of different um, different columns now. So we've got the Martian, which is red. Oh, and I like the surround. The, yes. Uh, the, 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 yeah. The, the laser cut inlay. And then we've got the blue that is um, 
the UN. Mm -hmm. So every comm in meetings, I'm like, is it a blue comm? Like, we basically have a language for comms right, now. Right. So, and then that just kind of reflects the show now as well. And to save money, because every comm is a vis effect layover, mm -hmm. and we're always conscious about, okay, if there's four people in the background, turn their comm away so we don't have to put a vis effect on it sure. because that costs a lot of money. But we, what we came up with in season two is just little acetates that oh. we can slap on them. And you can print on those. Yeah, we print on those, and then if they're playing them sideways, at least there's some kind of something, something on, that, yeah. on there that would suggest that there's tech on tech happening. You know, when you guys killed me at the end of season two uh, and set me as a mission specialist at a station, I noticed that my uh, my pad that I was working on was actually interactive. Yes. I would push things and things would change. Yeah, it would, and we have a whole department that's devoted to that, which is great. And it's nice to have the ability, for sure. I remember reading uh, Ridley Scott talking about the alien set. It was all cobbled together from like parts, detritus from the British aerospace industry, and that the actors got in and were like every switch turned on something, and they just had the best time. I'm, I, do you find the same thing with the actors on this show? Yeah, sometimes if there's specific beats, we'll map those out for them, but otherwise they can just go they crazy. Just click switches. And they, like they, they kind of get into a rhythm for it, like what it is now. And some of the actors that have been on the show a long time know exactly how all of this tech works in their, oh, in their world, which is nice. So we don't um, have to explain it to them. What is this cool looking so this, device here? I'll just move this aside. This is Melba's bomb that we used uh, in season three. Mm -hmm. So Ty was really specific that he wanted it to, to have uh, plasticine in it. So, so Oh, okay. So these are like blocks of plastic explosives. Yeah, exactly. So we just kind of made a, a futuristic version of this. And then there would be a comm that would sit in here like that. Oh, so you, it would be like a cell phone bomb. Yeah, exactly. Except so, it's a comm bomb. Yes, exactly. So this would light up by a simple battery that was in here and just just give it a kick and then VisFX would put anything over there. Okay. And then the whole bomb would then we go into this carriage here. Right. And then we've got everything on our show runs off dimmers. So every so we've got different lights inside, mm -hmm, LED mm -hmm. lighting. These are RGB, right? Yeah. So you can make them any color you want. Exactly. So what we do is that doesn't restrict us to say, okay, we're gonna make this this prop red or blue or whatever. We can make it whatever color on the day. We can make it pulse. We can make it change colors. Wow. So that's driven by the board. So this all gets connected. A battery gets put in. That all gets shoved inside. And now we have the ability to make this whatever color. So when it gets armed, it could go to green. It could go to red. It could go to whatever color we need. 10, 15 years ago, this kind of interaction impossible. was a fantasy. Totally impossible. Yeah. Even like when we started the show, these strip lights only came in one color. Right. So now they, but they come in all different colors now because we would have to go change the little box about. So it's just, tech has moved so quickly and it's helped us actually. Amazing, yeah. amazing. That's incredible. And now I see this one other piece here on the table that I'm really fascinated with. Is this an exoskeleton? It is an exoskeleton. So what... So this is a beautiful prop. It, 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 yes, it's, it, it was a fun build for us. Um, we, we had probably about 12 or 14 weeks to build it. Wow. So what we did is we bought an existing exoskeleton that would be ah. sold to like Home Depots or anything for enhanced lifting, so repetitive motions. Mm -hmm. And we bought the whole system. So um, we knew that the top half of the system would be used for Melba's power ripper, because right, we needed right. something to help her with that. And then we were gonna designate the bottom half to um, Drummer's uh, exoskeleton when she breaks her back. So basically all we did is just cladded to their system. So there's no working parts in this that's not motorized or anything. It's all working on, on uh, springs. Oh, okay, so it's just on the actor's body. It's quite exactly. heavy. It it's is a, quite it's heavy. A bit of a... So when, it, she, when she wears it, the weight was on her hips, mm -hmm. and then th th we'd have boots that would attach into here. Oh, Okay, so the weight is distributed. It's distributed well. So, oh. and then there is an on button, but all it does is engages the springs, basically. So once it goes into motion. And she can be pretty much sit in this position, and then when she starts to walk, it's just kind of like free flow walking. Um, I really appreciate the color, because on a, even NASA wrist rings, red is right and blue is left, and you have done the same yes. sort of color scheme Exactly. We try to we try to stay as close to realistic as possible on the show. It's, it's a mandate by Narain. So yeah. everything we do has to be based in science. We can't go too fantasy with stuff. Uh, how It seems as I'm walking around that there, that uh, it's the same show, but it's there's so much more going on. That so means your more. job has gotten much denser. Am I right? Yeah, it's every season seems to ramp up, and we're like, okay, this will be this will be just like last season, but it just gets <laughs> bigger and bigger, and we keep doing it, and then it, it's it's fun because it's it's it, from the show that it started with with a bunch of like people on a little spaceship. Yeah. To where we are now, it's it's epic in scope. It really and is. And like every like there's episodes with helmets and backpacks, and that's exhausting because helmets are hard to shoot with. Yeah. But yeah. the show's gotten much bigger. But I think we've all we've been here since the start, so it's we're all part of it. Yeah. So we've grown with the show. 
Well, I really appreciate you showing me some of the tech, nice. specifically for the cosplayers. Those are my people. I They're my, them. and uh, you know, you watch them out there, like I putting, did, yep. pouring all their enthusiasm did, yeah. into the stuff you build. That's awesome. Jim. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. A pleasure.